Boy, I hope this works, because it took a long time to set up. All right, guys, so this is one of the more requested videos that I've had. And uh, obviously, by the, by the title of the video, uh, we're going to try to to flesh a critter with a pressure washer. Um, lots of requests for it, so I've never done it. Uh, we're gonna give it a go. Now, everything that everybody's telling me about using the pressure washer is that it's more efficient and it, it's, it's faster. Uh, you know, just everything's easier about it. So, I have my doubts, but like I said, I'm gonna try to stay as unbiased as possible about this. Um, and we're just going to give it a go. So, to start off with though, what we're going to do is just to kind of compare, I've got a, a coon here and I've got a coon and a beaver because everybody says the beavers are hard to flesh and that they're easier on a pressure washer. So we're going to try one of each. But to start off with, we're going to flesh out this coon here and we're going to do it in a traditional manner. Um, I'm going to go at like a normal pace, I'll kind of walk you guys through and then we'll see. So, so let's just get started here. Uh, I'm going to set a stopwatch here and we'll just kind of see how long this is going to take us. Um, we'll just go here. So with the fleshing, a lot of people I feel use the sharp side of the knife way, way too much. It's called scraping a hide for a reason and that's what we're going to do. We're going to primarily scrape the hide. See, see here, I've got him started. We're just gonna work him down. Make sure we get him all cleaned off under the arms. Then we're gonna rotate him on the beam. Uh, pretty simple, like I said, a lot of guys, whenever they're scraping too, I, I see a lot of guys holding their knife and they're holding it out and then pushing and all you do by that is you chatter your knife right down the hide. If you hold your knife straight up and down, you actually you actually get the, the benefit of, of scraping it. So you can see we've gone around the hide. Coming around to the back, this is what everybody struggles with. Just a few slices down the neck. I usually get about to the shoulders. You can kind of feel that gristle if they've got old fight scars and stuff and then you can turn around to push it. Nothing really hard about it. Now we're going to pull them up. I use this clamp just to help me so I'm not all the time leaning over. And we're almost done. So anyway, uh, another thing, guys, I get a lot of questions about uh, the aprons and sleeves that I wear. Uh, I've gone through a bunch of different ones. I've been using these, uh, this new apron here for quite, quite a while. Very satisfied with it. It's made by uh, Grundens. So I will leave a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. Uh, it's to an Amazon, it's an Amazon affiliated link, so if you guys do purchase through my link, it does help me out. Finish down the feet, and all we've got left to do is the tail here. And stop. Two and a half minutes. So, not breaking any records by any means, but it's a good pace to hold, two and a half minutes. All right, so I'm gonna get set up uh, with the pressure washer and we're gonna see if it can beat two and a half minutes. All right, so this is what we're working with here. Um, I've got a gas powered 3000 PSI pressure washer and uh, we've got this coon and a beaver we're gonna try to attempt to, uh, to flesh here. I've got a a choice of really five different nozzles here. Um, we've got our zero degree, 15, 25, 40, and then I've got on here the uh, the turbo nozzle. It's the one that, that spins you know, the water rather than just 
sprays it out in a stream. So I'm all dressed up like I'm ready to go into some sort of a, a radiation lab here. I've got the rain suit and rubber boots because I can only imagine how messy this is gonna be. Um, full disclosure, I've never done this. That being said, I've washed my truck and the side of my house several times with a pressure washer. So at this point, I feel like I'm a professional. So we'll grab the pressure washer here, and I'm saying I'm just gonna kinda work down. So this is the highest nozzle that I've got, the one that does the most damage. It's really cooking on. And for the most part, with the exception of all the fat and slime flying in my face, it's kind of working. He's like rolling around the flushing beam. There's absolutely no way this is going to be quicker. Absolutely no way this is going to be quicker. Alright, so I've essentially spun him around the flushing beam. And I will say, it took the fat off to a degree. Uh, he's still really slimy though. And it didn't get any of the the hard to get areas. Uh, you know, around the the armpit area I've still got fat, the neck. I feel like I've given it a pretty good go uh, with this turbo nozzle. So I've just we're eliminating the stopwatch at this point because there's no possible way that that's quicker than two and a half minutes. Uh, I'm, what am I at here? I'm well over. So we're going to try a different nozzle here. So I grabbed the 15 degree nozzle here. I mean, I've got stuff everywhere on me too, guys. Like this is definitely not clean. And I was trying to spray away from me. But I got the 15 degree nozzle here. Let's try that one. So that's not really doing much either. Maybe if I move the flesh beam and spray away from me. Every time you move, it sprays you back up in the face with just a nasty bit of flesh and fat. All right, so that's not working. I don't think the 25 is going to be any better, but we'll give it a go. Hmm. Well, we are spending an incredible amount of time doing this. And all I've really succeeded doing here is I've pulled the heavy fat off of the belly area. The whole back, the whole back is essentially untouched. No, that's not doing anything. We were doing better with the turbo nozzle, and that's that's why I started with it too, because it's the it's the most powerful. So I'm holding this thing on one spot in the neck, and it just ain't getting it. Oh, there was a nice shot of fat in the face. 
All right, I'm about done with this. We're, we're not getting anywhere. There's no way you're ever gonna get everything clean. Aside from the fact that we didn't accomplish a lot, I've got all sorts of coon stuff all over me. Uh, it, it really didn't end well. Um, all you did was just take off the heavy fats. You can see it didn't peel, it didn't really push the fat off the skin. Uh, around the armpit area, that stuff still needs to be pulled off. So you're gonna have to come back with a knife uh, and definitely address that. Not only that, it doesn't seem like it really got all the layer of fat for no other reason than then it's still very slimy. Let me take my flushing knife here. And see, you'd have to almost scrape it because there's still another layer of fat that the, the pressure washer didn't quite get. And you could see if I cut this down with my knife and scrape it, you can see the difference. If the camera makes that out, this is a different color because this is still some fat that's left on there. And I can scrape that off, that layer of fat off. Not only that, we've now got a pretty soaking wet hide, which was my biggest concern. We'll talk about that later. But nonetheless, there's still a lot of work that's got to happen to this hide to get it to get it finished. So, coon on the pressure washer, fail in my opinion. So, I'm not gonna give up. It may work great for the beaver. Okay, so round two here. We've got a, just a rough skinned beaver set up here. And for this time, I'm just gonna completely forego the, the nozzles other than the turbo nozzle because they didn't do anything really. Um, I have a feeling that this one's actually going to be a tougher, tougher product because it normally takes a little bit more, um, a little bit more slicing to do a beaver. The underside, the belly, and around the arms, they scrape real easy, but the back usually requires some slicing. And I don't really even think we're going to touch around the rump area because that that's almost all like a almost a cartilage type of fat that you have to slice. But we'll give it a go. I took all the time to set this up. We're gonna we're gonna give it a go. So I've got my clamp back behind him to try to hold him on this beam because it seems like if you don't push straight down with the pressure washer, uh, he spins around the beam. But then if you push straight down, then it blows all back in your face and it's just a bad deal. So let's try it here. See every time you move that thing it blows fat back at you. Alright, so that was horrible. I even set this up, guys, where the wind was blowing away from me, and it's still, I'm just, I mean, I'm covered in this fatty flesh. Alright, so just like I said, uh, yes, we did remove, well, I got this stuff like up my nose. Okay, so yes, we did kind of remove the fat around the belly and the, the arm area, which I figured that that's a, usually an area that you scrape with a knife. Um, around the, the, the center of the back, the neck, you can see it's still real stringy. We didn't take a lot of the meat off down around the rump area it didn't even look like it touched it so I'll give it another go I'm already here I'm soaking wet we'll try it horrible all right I'm, I'm about over that I've been aside from the fact I've covered like a 20 foot radius and just all sorts of nastiness it's, it's still not working to a degree where you'll ever be able to not, not have to touch it with a knife. I mean, you can see here, 
Look, just a couple of strokes with the knife right there and I've peeled that entire back off and that's the hardest part and I sat there and put that pressure washer on it for for a good while I mean it just what was that 20 20 seconds 20 seconds and I've done more and you can see the transition that's the thing you can see the transition that the pressure washer does not take off all the fat versus this side which is it's done it's ready to go and like I said down on the towards the rump area here it uh it didn't even touch it you know and all I have to do What is it? Four slices. There's a fifth one to dress everything up, and I'm done. You could spend an hour out here, and I'm in. Look at me. I'm covered, covered in nasty. All right. So here's the finished, finished product, so to speak. Okay, so you can clearly see this is the side right here that I, you can see the line actually. It's a very distinct line. You can see the line that I, I started with the pressure washer. And all this heavy fat, it never came off. And this is the fat that I don't believe is going to melt away. Uh, I don't think you're ever going to get it to melt. There's too much left there. And then this whole back side here, that's what I did in, with the knife in like 30 seconds. Uh, so I'm, I don't know, I'm going to give this one a, I tried real hard. Aside from the fact that I'm still not done with any of the critters, and look at the mess that I've made. I don't know if you could, I mean, there's just a horrendous amount of mess from a long ways away. I am absolutely covered. So, my rain suit's going to have to take a raining to get to get back in order. Final thoughts. Uh, I think this is dumb as hell. I, I really do and I'm not saying that to, to try to insult the guys that do it and like it but um, I just do not see the point in it. I, I, there's no sense in going to all this work and trouble whenever you can get the same end product by using a knife in, in less time. I mean I've I've still got this stuff up my nose. I mean, you would have to be in like full riot SWAT gear here to attack this. So a couple of things which, I, which stand out to me as why this won't work more so than the rest. Number one being, and this is the number one thing. If you did ever get all the flesh off of this thing and we're ready to board it, you've now got a wet pelt that you're going to try to have to board. A wet pelt. Okay, that's fine before you flush them. After you flush them, that creates a problem because as soon as you're done, this skin's going to start drying. You're going to now have to board this critter and it's going to be a miracle if you don't get some type of fur slippage because there is no possible way that you're going to be able to let this fur dry and then still be able to board them in a timely, timely manner. It's just not going to happen. You're going to have to take this, you're going to have to take him and let him dry and then board him and then by that time he's going to be starting to dry along the edges and he's going to start to shrink up or you're just going to have to take a chance and board a wet critter which more than likely is not going to dry properly and you're going to have fur slippage issues. Now I guess the argument could be said if you're using hoops for beaver you could potentially hoop this beaver wet and then, you know, by having the hoop method as opposed to a board method, there's a possibility that he'll dry. Uh, uh, surprisingly though, these things aren't as wet as I thought they were going to be with the amount of water that I put on them. The leather really holds the, the water back, but that being said, they're wet enough that I almost, I guarantee you're going to have issues with fur slippage. Second thing is, this is nasty as hell. Uh, just the situation that you've got to put yourself in to do this. 
Now, I chose a pretty good day. It's like 40 degrees out here right now, um, which is quite honestly, I mean, I've still got that stuff all over me. That stuff's horrible. So I picked a day that's like halfway mild here, which is quite uncommon in the winter. I can only imagine having to try to do this, you know, in under freezing conditions. There's no way to drag out a hose and a pressure washer and be out here, you know, spraying this sucker off and it freezing to you. There's, there's just no possible way. Uh, you know, you'd have to have a dedicated heated area to just destroy. Whereas I could sit in my nice cozy fur shed next to the fire and, and be flushing away. So that's the other thing that I see is, is completely situational. Now maybe for you guys way down south where it doesn't ever get cold, this is something option, you know, an option for you, but there's no way for me. Another thing is simple daylight. If you don't have like a closed in barn or carport or somewhere to do this, you've almost got to do this stuff during the daylight. And for a lot of us, especially me, there's no way. I mean, I, there's no way during the week that I could do this uh, during daylight hours. So I would be out here with a headlamp. I can only imagine having to do this with a headlamp in the dark. There's just no way. So, I mean, I'm not going to say it didn't work because, yes, it did remove the large chunky fat. Uh, you know, there's no doubt. I spent a good amount of time on this coon. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's fairly, fairly well removed of fat. That being said, there's no way you're ever going to get all the fat off this. You're still going to have to go at him with a knife. So why not just start? Uh, like I said, I showed you guys, we could do a coon in, you know, two to two and a half minutes, uh, fairly easily. Uh, the beaver doesn't take too much longer to be quite honest. You can slice these beavers down really, really quick. Um, uh, I just don't see the point in it. So anyway, guys, lots of requests for this video. I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you maybe took something from it. If nothing else, if you were thinking about it, save yourself the time. I got the mess. I did it for you. Uh, I am gonna go take a shower now because I am filthy from all this. Hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time.